Hello and welcome. Logic theory part one, the fundamentals. In logic theory, we have two constants, true and false, T for true and F for false. Those are called Boolean constants or logical constants. And we have a Boolean variable or logical variable <coughs> or also called proposition. It's any statement that can be true or false. Here are some examples. Uh, propositions. <coughs> Today is Tuesday. I am 25 years old. Discrete math is easy. Two plus five is equal to 10. Miami is the capital of Florida. Five minus two is equal to three. All of these are statements that can be true or false, and that's what those are called propositions. Here are examples of not propositions. If I say, what is your name? Do your homework, mind your business. Five plus X equals 10. X plus Y greater or equal than Z. So here you see this one is not really a proposition, but once you assign a value to X, it becomes a proposition. <clears throat> now we're going to introduce some operators, logical operators, and sometimes called connectives. They uh, apply to uh, simple propositions. Uh, we call them atomic, atomic propositions to form compound propositions, uh, also called Boolean expressions. The first one is the not, negation, not, and we use this symbol for it. So one way of defining a, uh, what uh, an operation operator does is to create this table, it's called truth table. So P is your proposition, it could be true or false, then not P is the when P is true, not P is false. When P is false, not P is true. Here are some examples. Propositions, today is Tuesday. The negation, today is not Tuesday. You don't say today is Wednesday because you might also be wrong. So the, the negation of today is Tuesday, today is not Tuesday. I am 25 years old, I am not 25 years old. Discrete math is easy, discrete math is not easy. Two plus five equals to 10, two plus five not equal to 10. Miami is the capital of Florida, Miami is not the capital of Florida. And five minus two is equal to three, five minus two is not equal to three. Here is the conjunct conjunction in the, the AND operator, and we use this symbol for it. Uh, the add operator is when both propositions are true, the and will be true. Otherwise, the result will be false. See here, both of them are, are true, you get a true. Otherwise, you get false. So here's an example. If I say Dominic is from France and he lives in Ohio, I, set it, I can set it up this way. P, Dominic is from France. Q, Dominic lives in Ohio. Then one, this proposition can be translated as P and Q, P and Q. Here is the OR operation, or it's called disjunction. And we use this uh, symbol for it. So the OR will be true if at least one of them is true. See this says true, true, you get, you get true, true, false, you get true, false, true, you get true. Otherwise you get false. So this is also called sometimes inclusive or. Inclusive or. The exclusive or, and we use this symbol for it, it's true only if one of them, not both, is true like in this situation here and in this situation here. And this is called exclusive or. 
Now, from the text, we can uh, understand what it meant, whether it meant a, uh, a an inclusive or, or whether it meant at, uh, an exclusive or. Here's, a, here's some examples. No outside recess if it is raining or if the temperature is below 25. This or is an inclusive or. If both happen, we still don't go outside. A prerequisite for math 510 is math 120 or math 230. Again, this is an inclusive or. Here is a, a, examples of an exclusive or. Lunch comes with soup or salad. So when you see that on the menu, you don't ask for both of them. It's only one of them, one or the other. A car dealer offers $2,000 cash back or 2% financing. This or is exclusive. Here's an implication. Implication is a little bit more difficult to understand. It's called also condition, conditional. The only thing that you need to remember is we do not allow truth to imply false. Truth will not imply false. That's why it's false. Everything else is true. So true implies true is true. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. It's called implication. And uh, only sit, uh, 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 situation where you get a false is true does not imply false. Now P is the hypothesis, antecedent, and Q is the conclusion, consequent. Now there are three ways, main ways that we uh, we can express this. We can say if P then Q, or we can say P implies Q, or we can say if P comma Q. Those are also valid ways of uh, talking about implication. Q if P, P only if Q, Q whenever P, P is sufficient for Q, Q is necessary for P. Now down the road, if you are uh, trying to deal with propositions that say whenever necess is necessary, I recommend highly to write it down in this form, P implies Q, or if P then Q. This way you can do more work with it than, uh, and, uh, than if you are using these uh, uh, situations right here. Here are some examples. Uh, two plus three equals five implies seven plus three equals 10. This one is a true because that this is a true, this is true, that true implies true is true. Here, two equals five implies 12 equals 15 is also true. This is false and this is false. False implies false is true. Two equals five implies four, uh, two equals five implies four plus three equals seven. This is false and this is true and the result will be true. But here two plus five equals seven implies three greater than five. This is false. This is true and this is false. True implies false is false. Now, here's what you can turn it into if Q then Q. If you read here, John gets scared whenever he flies. It's better to write it if John flies, then he gets scared. To be a citizen of USA, it's sufficient that you were born in USA. Write it this way. If you were born in USA, then you are citizen of the USA. It is necessary to have a valid password to access the internet. If you access the internet, then you have a valid password. And you will see a little bit later why we are turning this into this standard form. Here are three different uh, propositions obtained from the implication. Something we call converse, contrapositive, and inverse. So this is the implication, P implies Q, and as I explained earlier, true implies false is false, and everything else is true. 
Now, the converse is Q implies P. Q implies P, you say true, true, false, true, 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 false, true. Not Q implies not P. Not Q implies not P. True, true implies false, is false. False implies true, true. True implies true, true. And inverse is not P implies not Q. And you find that the implication P implies Q and the contrapositive not Q implies not P are the same, are the same. And these two are the same. But the implication and the converse, they have nothing to do with each other. So let's, uh, uh, if you are asked to find the converse, the contrapositive and inverse uh, of a uh, proposition like this, Jennifer comes to school every time there is going to be a test. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you need to put this in the form P implies Q. Because this way, you can go back to this table and say, okay, P implies Q, the converse is Q implies P. The contrapositive is not Q implies not P. The inverse is not P implies not Q. So first write the proposition in the form if P then Q or P implies Q. Here's how we, how we can do it. If there is going to be a test, then Jennifer comes to school. See, P, there is going to be a test. Q, Jennifer comes to school. So now we have P implies Q. We need to the converse. The converse we know it's Q implies P. So we can just read it, Q implies P. If Jennifer comes to school, then there will be a test. The contrapositive is not Q implies not P, not Q. So if Jennifer does not come to school, does not come to school, then there will be not, there will not be a test. Then there will not be not P, see? There will be not a test, which is not P. The inverse is not P implies not Q. If there is not going to be a test, then Jennifer does not come to school. It's very, very important to write it in this form. Otherwise, you get really lost when you when the word is whenever is used or it's necessary or uh, in these situations we write every time. So now we note that if a conditional proposition P implies Q is true, it's contrapositive, not Q implies not P, it will also be true. But it's converse, Q implies P will not be necessarily true. Here's some examples, one example. The, let's look at this condition, conditional proposition. If n is prime, then n is odd. That's true. If n is prime, then n is, is odd. The contrapositive, if n is not odd, then n is not prime. That's true. If n is not odd, and that means f is uh, uh, that means that means n is even, then n cannot be prime. But look at the converse. The converse of this: if n is odd, if n is odd, then n is prime. That's not true always, because take n equals to 15. 15 is an odd number, and it's not a prime number. Here is the by implication. It's called also by conditional. Sometimes we also use if and only if. So from the truth table, you see that P by conditional Q is true when both B and Q have the same values. True, true, false, false. Now, this is useful to prove that P by conditional Q, <coughs> or if and only if Q, you have to prove two things. P implies Q and Q implies P. If you look at this table here, you can easily see that these two are the same. So P implies Q and Q implies P is the same as P uh, by conditional Q.
and that's very important to remember. <clears throat> now, uh, here are some def definitions. A proposition is called tautology if it's always true. It's called contradiction or unsatisfiable if it's always false. And it's called contingency, and sometimes we use satisfiable if it is sometimes true and sometimes false. Okay, look at this, uh, these uh, examples here. Uh, I'm finding P and P implies Q implies Q. So I just make this table, that's P, that's Q. So uh, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. We always do that when you have two variables. Now P implies Q. Again, we don't allow truth to imply false, false, and true, true, true. Now you need to take this and say P and, P and this, see? True, true, you get true. True, false, you get false. False, true, you get false. False, true, you get false. So now you want this implies Q. This implies Q. True implies true, yes. False implies false, yes. False implies true, yes. False implies false, yes. And you see that this expression is always true, no matter what P and the values of uh, P and Q. And that's called tautology. This is also called uh, modus ponens. Here's an expression where it's, it's a contradiction. Uh, you have a P here and a Q, find a P uh, by conditional Q, uh, you get this, and then P exclusive of Q, you get C, exclusive, that's false, true, true, false, and then you get the and of these two, the and of these two, false, false, false. False. And so this expression is always false, and we call it a contradiction. Here are some uh, famous tautology, uh, tautologies. Uh, if, if P is true and P implies Q, then Q will be true. And this is called modus ponens. Not Q and P implies Q will imply not P. That's modus tonus, and so on, so on and so forth. Uh, this one is called hypothetical syllogism. P implies Q, and Q implies R, then P implies R. Those are, we can, we can use them uh, down the road. Here is P and Q, is P and, if P and Q is true, then P will be true, and also Q will be true, and so on and so forth. And that is the end of logic theory part one.